Excellent. Um, I have the pleasure to uh, introduce CMP. Uh, my name is Paul Jan Jacobsen. And uh, it's a CMP implementation, which we will do in two steps. Uh, first, a word of warning. We say we'll implement it to the 1st of October, but of course we need to have the acceptance from the Danish regulator, and they will have it on a meeting on the 28th of September. So uh, we're waiting for a positive uh, acceptance of the CMP. But that we expect uh, to come in place. Uh, another thing I should just say straight, uh, that is that we will uh, send out this later this week a new rules for, uh, for uh, gas transport. And in that uh, rules there we will also have the CMP uh, rules in there. If I can change the... Yeah. Uh, I will have nine slides only for you. Two slides first, which is an introduction and general uh, catching up where we are. And then three slides on uh, over subscription and buyback, and we'll have three on surrender, and then a final uh, slide that kind of sums it all up. This is Jaguar exit capacity. And the reason we're showing this one is because you can see here we are having 35% of our technical capacity still available after the yearly contract. And this is the most congested area we have in Denmark, and as you can see, it's definitely not congested. Uh, and why are we then implementing CMP? Because CMP is all about opening up for contractual congestions. So it's not your idea to implement CMP, it's not ours, it's not the Danish regulator, it's a demand from the European Commission that everyone, no matter if they have contractual <coughs> congestion or not, shall implement CMP. Um, the way we intend to implement CMP is in two steps. Today we have CMP consists of four different instruments, and we have already long-term used them, lucid implemented. There will be a small change for the 1st of October. <coughs> there we will have um, that today, if long-term used to lucid is implemented and activated, and a shipper is taking his capacity away from him, then today it's us in the Guinea who does that. In the future, that will be the Danish regulator who will take that capacity from a shipper. We don't think that will happen, but that's the process. Um, the change for the 1st of October is mainly what is said here, OSBB, over subscription and buyback, and surrender step one. And as you can see, there's also something called surrender step two sometimes in the future. I'll come back to that, but the main difference is that step one, that's everything is done manually, and on the step two, everything is fully automated. And some of you might need or, or, or miss the fourth instrument, which is short-term use the lucid. But that uh, you might know from, from Germany or Austria. But that is not implemented here because we have oversubscription and buyback. Therefore, that is not needed in, in, in our system. But let's take a look at oversubscription and buyback. Uh, or subscription is something which can be uh, requested by you as a shipper, or we as a TSO can initiate it. Um, and you have to do it the day beforehand. So, for example, if you want more capacity, more firm capacity available on day three, you will have to let us know on day two. Uh, you should uh, uh, remember that when we have firm capacity, we'll always take 10% of the capacity out and reserve that for the day ahead uh, market. So we always have some day ahead capacity and the oversubscription capacity will come on top of that. Uh, here it looks as if we can see the difference between uh, normal firm capacity and oversubscription capacity. But when you open your Prisma screens and you buy your capacity, of course, the other thing you can see is just firm capacity. And that uh, capacity has the same rights and obligation as all other capacity has. Um, but if we do an oversubscription, we are also doing a buyback process. Um, the first slide here, you can see this is the firm capacity and oversubscription capacity. And if we uh, do a buyback, then we will ask you as a shippers at what price you are willing to sell us uh, your capacity back. So we hope we will see some offers from you. We will go through these uh, uh, offers from you, and if we have too much capacity or the prices are outrageous, we will say 
no thank you to some of these capacities. And this is the capacities we are, have left. So this is basically an offer from you to us and we can buy this capacity. So this we will not pay for, it's a free option for us. And you still have the full right to use this capacity. In case, in the day, um, uh, we find out that there is, we cannot uh, send all the ga uh, gas through the system, then we'll activate uh, some of these offers and we will here actually uh, pay you for, uh, for this capacity. And what we do, we do not pay to buy the capacity back itself. What we do is we pay to control that capacity. So you lose the right to use your capacity. And that makes, uh, in order that we can nominate, request that you nominate or renominate in a specific manner. If you look at the timing of it, we have to put it in a timing where, where uh, the current auction is, is happening. And today we have the Prisma capacities are uploaded from our side at 20 minutes past 4. At the 4.30, then the auction at Prisma takes place for day head capacity. And at 5 o'clock, it's published and you can see the results. So this process has to start before this. Therefore, if you want to have some uh, oversubscription capacity available on a day, you ha will have to let us know at 10 o'clock the day before. We will analyze the situation and two hours later, at 12 o'clock, we will uh, publish to the market how much capacity, additional capacity we can put on the auction. At the same time, we will also request you as a shipper to, uh, to um, at what price you're willing to let us buy back this capacity. And at 2 o'clock, two hours later, we want uh, you to send us uh, uh, the prices you are willing to, uh, to sell us this capacity. These are three slides on the oversubscription and buyback. If there are any questions on that, I'll be happy to take them or I'll continue with the surrender process. Yes? I have a question related to the price. So you buy it back the capacity and uh, which price do you sell at the same price? Or Sorry. You buy back some capacity. Yes. And what is your selling price? You put it in the auction and are you sure that you're not so you don't gonna buy back higher than you're gonna sell it? I'll try with a. L I'm not sure. I'm quite sure what you're asking about. Uh, when okay, let me put it another way. Are you earning money on this, or are you losing money, or is it money neutral? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we never make a profit. We always give the profit back to the market. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but it's a good question. There are two uh, instruments we can choose from, right? We could have the short-term use of lucid, which we have implemented in Germany. That's where you, as a shipper is are losing your capacity rights for no price. Here, what we're doing, oversubscription and buyback, there we as a TSO, we take a risk. And, and uh, we're taking the risk on behalf of you. So when, you, when we sell the capacity, we always sell the capacity at the, uh, on the auction and you get the auction price, and we buy it back, that is uh, at the, uh, we, will, we will take the prices you offer us. We'll use that price, but we will have to look into the technical system, if we can do it in another way in a, cheap, in a cheaper manner. If we can uh, increase the pressure somewhere or we can use the storages or whatever technical things we can do in, sh in order to ensure that it's the uh, lowest cost for the market. So uh, we will keep, uh, we will use the lowest cost and that we will always benchmark uh, the price you are offering us to what else options we have. Okay, but there is a risk that you're losing money because you're going to buy a higher price than you're going to sell. Yes. Okay. Uh, second question down. Why would a shipper request you to sell extra capacity? Uh, for, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, if you look at the board in Germany, for example, uh, uh, I would be surprised if anyone asked for more capacity. Uh, to Sweden, I would be surprised as well, but there might be some very uh, cold winter day in a pressure situation that uh, somebody would like some more firm capacity. Um, 
And the, the concept behind this is that currently we are having, I think the current system works quite well, that we have firm capacity, and in addition to that, we have interruptible capacity. Uh, and all interruptible capacity, which has been nominated, has always been sent to Sweden, for example. So we never cost any nominations. Uh, but this regulation, um, CMP regulation, demands that we now sell additional uh, firm capacity in addition to, which actually is firm, yeah. The, the trigger for me as a shipper of doing as extra capacity would be the auction results. The auction results <coughs> which are not very clean as capacity, but that's only known <coughs> later on. So why not turn it around and say, okay, the, the TSO just starts this process <coughs> and starts selling a bit of extra capacity based on OGB. And then if that's without any obligation to buy back in the end, you can increase that bit and you can increase your revenues. Why do you rely on shippers to request? Uh, we don't rely. It's the two ways to have oversubscription, if I understand the question correct. We, uh, shipper has the right <coughs> to trust you that if you want more capacity, uh, you can request it. If we think the market needs more capacity, uh, we will put more capacity to the market. But uh, Realize that we can take, uh, make a wrong decision and, and or not the perfect decision. Uh, we will also, uh, it's also an option for the market to request more capacity. <coughs> so we can do it and the shipper can, can request for us to do it. To me, it's a sort of trial and error process that ESO has to start with OSBD because it's like an aeroplane. You start selling more seats than there are in the plane itself, and then that's an extra revenue, but then the cost to buy back the seats might in the end be higher, and then you've sold too many seats. Yes. I couldn't say it more perfectly myself. It's, it's a perfect explanation. Uh, it's not something we choose. It's something we have to do. Hmm. Shall we stop the questions now? Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, may I take questions? or just? OK, uh, question down there. Yes. So, how could you imagine that a shipper can determine the demand at 10? Not, not really trading has happened yet, not even the first trading hour really finished, so... Well, if a shipper feels unsecure about if there's not uh, sufficient capacity on the market, here I can request us to put on the market more firm capacity. That capacity will then be published on... Uh, you can then... Uh, uh, by that capacity on the Prisma platform. So this is, when you ask for more capacity, it's not, uh, it's not uh, something you have to buy. You can just ask us to supply it to the market. And all the shippers will have a chance to bid for that. But in theory, I mean, well, before they had auction, I don't know the demand, uh, the offer you have as well for capacity. Uh, no, but you will know that we have 10% of our firm capacity on the day head auction. How much in addition to that 10%, you don't know. You might, now you actually, you can. You can calculate it out, figure it out. You know our firm capacity. You know how much we sold in yearly, quarterly, monthly auctions. Which is left of that is on the daily auctions plus the 10%. So you will be able to calculate how much uh, firm capacity will be available. And you can, uh, you can request us to put additional firm capacity on top of that. Uh, a request like that doesn't cost anything. Uh, cost, of course, <coughs> to buy the capacity, then it costs it. Is that a okay. And let's mention you do it, and after the year, I mean, the question was about the risk. You, you made a loss. Will it then be put on top of the tariffs for the next year? Um, or is it a risk that you take on your own? A very intelligent question. Uh, normally, uh, in European TSOs, they're owned by, uh, like in Germany, you're owned by private companies. We are a state-owned company. We cannot make a profit. We cannot pay out dividends. So any profits or loss we have, or the profits are uh, given back to the market. And if we make a loss, unfortunately, that is also given to the market and put on top of, of, the, of our costs. Uh, we do not expect this to be uh, a huge cost. That's not our expectations. I am completely over time. Uh, I have... 
half of the presentation left. Should I continue or? Uh, fine. Three slides on surrender. I'll do it fast. Uh, here's an example of how we have intend to have our process for 1st of October. Example, yearly capacities. You have, as a shipper, bought yearly capacities and you bought too much, you don't need it really. So you make a surrender to an Aginet. It's, you can do it, and you don't have to, but you can. You can also send it to the secondary market if you, actually, actually there you can make a profit. In the if you make a surrender, you cannot make a profit. But you say you, may, you surrender this capacity to an Aginet, and Aginet takes this capacity, try to sell it, on the auctions as their own capacity. Firstly, first relevant auction would be a quarterly auction. If it's not sold there, the next relevant auction would be a monthly auction. And if you're not able to sell it in a monthly auction, we will give you back the capacity, uh, the monthly capacity which you then can use or sell on the secondary market or whatever. But when you have made a surrender, you cannot pull back that surrender. The daily uh, products are not part of the surrender for the 1st of October 15. Uh, what we expect to happen later on, at the earliest in 2016, that is that um, if you go through the same process as before, a bit speedy, uh, the quarterly products, if they are not sold, it's the monthly products, if they are not sold, then we will try to sell it as a daily product. If the daily products are not sold, then you will have uh, daily products delivered back to you. In other words, if you surrender a yearly product and we are not able to sell it, you will get it back as 365 daily products. Uh, the rules for making surrender, the timing, the deadlines, and all of that, that is fully aligned with the German way of doing surrender. And the reason we do that, that is because uh, we have bundled products, and to make the bundled product function as a surrendered product. Uh, all the details of this I will not explain to you. You can read it in the backup slides. I have like five backup slides we can look at and, and read the, the details. Final slide I have. Um, the, uh, the way we have talked about many different kinds of firm capacity. First, we have the technical capacity. Then, we have the surrender capacity. Then, any long term use and use capacity there might be. And finally, our oversubscription capacity. Um, the reason it's interesting for you that is, if you make, uh, if you surrender capacity, you know that your capacity comes before our oversubscription capacity. So this is the capacity, uh, the way uh, it's sold in an auction. But if, if, you, uh, if you look at this as a, as a shipper, when you buy capacity, all you see is one thing, and that is firm capacity, and you don't have to worry about this. This is kind of stuff that makes the life of our IT people very interesting. They have to try to figure out how to make this function in our ID systems. Eh? Uh, I have a couple of backup slides you can download from our page afterwards. If there are any more questions, I'll be happy to take them. <coughs> yeah. No, no, you can always surrender. That's a, a right you have to surrender capacity to us. Okay, and what is the new prioritization when you sell the capacity? Then you sell your own capacity first or you sell the surrender capacity? I'll just take it back. Yeah. Uh, number one is technical capacity. That is the capacity you know as a firm capacity. That is always firm. That is the first sold. After that, if some shipper surrenders capacity, that one, that capacity is sold afterwards. 